Hello, hello, hello. Assalamu alaikum. Ji ayanu, pakhair ragale, ni hao, chune shumme, washmale, ohayo, good zaymis, guten morgen. Hola, bonjour, priviyat, kaifa hal, hala shuma chatore, ahlan vasalan, marhaba, buna, mucho, gracia, swabi, of, and a very amazing good morning to everybody who's tuned into PTV World and are watching World this morning alongside Shazad Khan. Ladies and gentlemen, today is Monday and we are going to get started after Eid and Independence Day as well. And I think that for everybody, it might be a little difficult to get back into routine. But for all of those people who are so disciplined in life that they never actually bothered to, you know, go out of the way for anybody else and made sure that they are actually going to follow their disciplined routine, I don't think that it's going to be difficult for them. But other than that, I think that uh, a lot of kids are actually going to school today. So the schools have opened up after summer vacations. So I think it's a big relief for all of those mothers out there because uh, they kind of, uh, it, it's quite a lot of hard work, ladies and gentlemen, to look after kids. It's not an easy job. And especially when you know that they're going to be at home 24 seven, I think it's going to be a little bit of trouble for the mothers out there. And uh, because of the fact that parents over here usually do take their kids out in summer vacations, but for all of those kids who haven't been out outside the house just because of the fact that they were their cousins were over and whatnot, I think that they have a lot of complaints to make. But other than that, for all of those mothers, thank you very much for looking after your kids. And uh, it's about time that they are actually there are a few students who are going into newer grades as well. There are a few students who are actually coming back to the same class after summer vacations. It's because of the variation in the system of schools as well. So we just wanted to wish best of luck for all of those students who are out there, for all of those parents who are out there, and for everybody who's going to go back to work and make sure that they are actually chasing their destiny as well. So this is it for now. I think this is it for the introduction. But today, ladies and gentlemen, we have a very interesting show. And it's because of the fact that two of the most important days are being observed today as well, one being World Humanitarian Day and the other one being World Photography Day as well. So the first half we are actually going to dedicate to the World Humanitarian Day. And before we speak about uh, what it is all about, I, we have got a small video to share with you guys. Go ahead, take a look at this video. And when you guys will come back, I will actually introduce to you quite a lot younger humanitarians over here in the, stu uh, in the studios with us, ladies and gentlemen. Go ahead, take a listen, and when you guys will come back, we'll introduce to you some amazing fresh faces over here in the studios with us today. I'm very excited about that. Let's do it. यहाँ पर आज क्या हो रहा है जहाँ पर अभी आप मौजूद हैं? मैं तो आया क्योंकि मेरे कश्मीर के दोस्तों के लिए क्योंकि वो वो हमारे brothers and sisters and I'll fight for them. They are our brothers and I'll raise voice for them angrily. मोदी को मैं नरकारी थी और मैं मोदी को मैं बहुत गुस्सा हूँ उसके साथ. Well, I'm not afraid of him. I'm brave. I have the power of Iman and I'll do anything to defeat him. This is our time to stand and raise voice for Kashmir. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if a country has got uh, some amazing humanitarians of such sort, I think that we really do not have to be bothered about anything other than that what we really need to teach our uh, kids as well. But uh, this uh, lady, particularly this kid, this uh, young, amazing daughter of the soil has actually made a point. And there's one more thing which I wanted to mention, and that is that um, may it be, you know, Independence Day, may it be any other holiday, may it be Eid, whatnot. What I've witnessed throughout this week, the past week, I think I'm very proud of uh, the entire Pakistani nation. And it's because of the fact that everybody stood together, you know, for all of those celebrities, for all of those politicians, for all of those spokespersons, for all of those anchor persons. Everybody from every walk of life made sure that they're going to be on one page uh, if every, anybody is actually going to raise their voice against Kashmir. And I think that uh, for all of those Pakistanis who've made sure that they're going to make a point on the democratic front as well, uh, thank you very much for doing that. I think everybody needs to play their role. These young humanitarians are going to play their role too as well. But other than that, speaking about World Humanitarian Day, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it is actually observed to commemorate the services of one gentleman and his 21 uh, people within his team as well. His name was Sergio as well. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, he kind of put in quite a lot of effort to make sure that, you know, people, uh, you know, where there are areas where there is war, you know, obviously there are repercussions. People do not get to eat food. People are dying. There are disease outbreaks as well. There are so many other problems. So the whole concept of observing this World Humanitarian Day is to actually look after people. May it be war, may it not be war as well. And other than that, if we speak about Pakistan, even the United Nations mentioned about 
Red Crescent because Red Crescent has actually played a very pivotal role in making sure that they're going to uplift the morale of the people, whether it may be because of terrorism, may it be because of hunger, may it be because of any other atrocity or problem within Pakistan as well. So I think that we really need to take out a minute and thank all of those people who've rendered their services in the name of our country as well. And we can definitely not forget Mr. Abdul Sataridi, who's actually, who was the one who, who I mean, I do not actually have words to explain the kind of life he's actually gone through as well. He was a very simple guy and he made sure that he's actually going to create a network of ambulances, which is going to be the largest in the world with 700 ambulances. I think all of these people, all of those NGOs, you know, people individually helping other people, we really need to appreciate all of them. And this is all about World Humanitarian Day. And then at the same time, obviously, we cannot uh, forget about Kashmir. Kashmir, Kashmir is just like our heart to us. And uh, for all of those Kashmiri brethren, we are definitely trying our level best on the democratic front, on the political front, on every way possible for all the Pakistanis out there. And Kashmir will definitely be a part of Pakistan, inshallah. But without any further ado, this, uh, these little, cute, amazing humanitarians are over here in the studios. Without any further ado, I'm going to introduce them to you, ladies and gentlemen, on my right hand side. Uh, I've been joined by a very tiny, cute little girl, and she's none other than Miss Laiba Khan. She's a student at International Grammar, and she's in grade two. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum, how are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much for joining us. Sangi, Khairam, Barova? Oh. Oh, that's great. So, you know, just uh, I only know a little bit of Pashto, and that's all I can ask, but uh, I'm going to try further as well. I'm, I'll, I'll try to learn. More Pashto, ladies and gentlemen, but alongside Laiba, ladies and gentlemen, we have been joined by Savera Adnan. She's a student of grade six. Hello, Savera. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you. And last but not the least, ladies and gentlemen, very amazing, very pretty looking lady is over here in the studio with us. She's just seven years old and she's in grade three. She's none of them. Miss Samaira Adnan. Hello, Samaira. Assalamu alaikum. How are you? I'm fine. Thank you very much for joining us. It's wonderful to have you. Okay, so I'm going to get my conversation started with you, Laiba. So Laiba, you know, uh, everybody is watching this video over the internet and they're going crazy that how a young girl can say such amazing things. So how did you come up with all of what you just said on the video? I just want to raise voice for Kashmiri people because they are our brothers and sisters. Yes. They have a heart and they want to be free from Indian army. Yes. So I will stand with them and I will raise voice for Kashmir. Wow, that's great. Which is why we've actually invited you to our studio. What do you want to say about Kashmiri people? About Kashmiri people, I want to say that all the countries must go and raise voice for Kashmir. They must unite and take a stand against this cruelty and aggression. Exactly. And uh, so for, for all the countries to be together, how, how will that happen? Uh, do you want to make a pledge to all of those people, to all of those leaders who are out there? I, I believe that they are actually watching you right now. Go ahead, talk to them. You know, just look into the camera. Say whatever you feel like. I just want to say to them that I want to help the people here so that people can help Kashmir people because this is our time to stand up and raise voice for Kashmir. They are humans, we have a heart and we are worried about our brothers and sisters. So we will raise voice for them exactly. and we will stand. Exactly, ladies and gentlemen, that's a clear message by a young daughter of Pakistan. And uh, I personally believe that everybody within Pakistan and outside Pakistan who actually bears and loves the Pakistani flag and is a Pakistani <coughs> will definitely be united in this time of uh, atrocities uh, on Indian occupied Kashmir. We are definitely with them and we will definitely uh, move forward with, def with, with an objective to get Kashmir into safe hands as well where there are no atrocities, where they have their fundamental rights as well. But moving on to you, Severa, what do you have to say about World Humanitarian Day today? I want to say that we have to be like equally, uh, yeah. we have to be equally treated. treated. Yes. Like in Kashmir, they're like killing everyone. Yeah. One by one. And here we are free. We want to fight for, for them. Yeah. And how do you intend to do that? I want our army to be strong. Yeah. And we have to raise our voice. And we have to like fight for us, okay. for them. And we have to not like just fight like physically. Okay. We have to fight by talking. Yes. By giving speech. Okay. And we have to help their freedom. 
So what Savera, ladies and gentlemen, is trying to say that, you know, each and every platform which is available for everybody out there, you know, there are a lot of ministers who go to different occasions and they speak about Kashmir as well. Even Mehbi Shayat spoke very well about Kashmir. This is what Savera is recommending, that this is what we need to do. We need to come up with a peaceful solution. We need to sit down. We need to talk to other people. We need to talk to all, talk with all the stakeholders out there and make sure that there, there's a solution for all of those Kashmiri people in problem as well. Well, let me move on to Samaira. Where Samaira, so everybody's school is opening now. Uh, what about yours? Is your school open? Yes. So, so you didn't go to school today? Yes. Well, what, because you had to be on the show? Yes. Okay, well that's great. Do you, do you, do you like going to the school? Yes. Which school do you go to? Beacon House School. Beacon House School? And what do you study over there? I study maths. Maths? Science? Uh, which subject do you like the most? Maths. Maths? Okay, I hated maths, ladies and gentlemen, but it's perfectly alright. That's not a problem. But what about you, Laiba? So, other than Kashmir and you raising your voice for Kashmir, who is Laiba? Okay, I want to know Laiba. Who is Laiba? Laiba? I'm a child ambassador of Pakistan, the first child ambassador of Pakistan, the youngest. Okay. And I have the power of words. I use it for good to raise voice for Kashmir. Yeah, that, that, that's great. So, this is Laiba. So, what, what does Laiba want to be when Laiba grows up? I want to be a doctor with the leader, a greatest leader. So, you want to world. be a doctor and a leader? Yeah. So, I believe that you're actually following the footsteps of the president of Pakistan, Dr. Arif Alvi. He's a doctor and he's a leader and he's the president of the country. Do you want to be like him? Yeah, yeah. but I also want to be like Imran Khan. Imran Khan is the greatest leader in this world. Wow, yeah. But why, do you, why do you love Imran Khan? Because he keeps Pakistan safe. Yeah. And so am I. I'm going to follow his footstep with Hazrat Muhammad Sallallahu and Allah. Wow, it's, it's just great. But who teaches you all of this stuff? Does it come to you naturally? Or somebody is teaching you constantly? Does your parents tell you that, you know, this is something, Laiba, you're capable of and you need to do this? I just learn it by myself. For Allah, I do it. Oh, because no. I love Allah and I will do anything for Allah. Wow, that, that, it, it's just superb. So, Sabira, let me move to you. So, after watching her video and after watching her speak, I think that she's a brilliant kid. It's very important. What do, you, how, what do you think that the parents actually need to tell their kids while they're growing up? And what do you think that you might have missed out on? I think they, uh, they must like tell the children what they want to listen okay. instead of weapons and yeah. like hard things, yeah. spooky things and about like fighting. Yep. So they must be like learned in order, okay. in a political order kind okay. of. Okay. So, so uh, what, what you're trying to say is that the kids actually need to learn, they really need to stay away from negativity, they really need, do not need to see all of that news which is going on all over the world. All they need is probably Powerpuff Girls and a few dolls and yes, a good book to read as well. Samira, do you read books? Yes. Which book do you, did you read last time? Snow White? Last time. Snow White? No. Which, which book did you read? Randomly. Huh? Randomly. Can, can you tell Any me what book. she say? Princess book. Princess book. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay, randomly. That's what you're trying to say. I'm sorry that I couldn't get it because she's speaking very... You know, uh, I mean, I, it, it's hard for me to listen. But ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I believe that these kids are actually the future of Pakistan. And it brings me quite a lot of joy by just sharing this particular perspective that imagine that all of these amazing young women over here, young girls in the studios are actually destined to do something great for Pakistan. And it does not just come naturally along it. I think that their parents have played a very pivotal role in nurturing and making sure that uh, they're actually going to be useful for their motherland as well. And I think that this is the type of culture which we need to instill in our kids in the future generations. And it is a true example which is right in front of you. But uh, I just wanted to go on. So I'm just going to ask them a few more questions about their personal lives. And then we'll move on to the World Photography Day as well. Saliba, uh, you want to be a doctor, right? But yeah. do you like studying? I like studying too much. Too much? Why, why do you like studying too much? Do you play outdoors? No, I don't play outdoors. Why? Out, playing outdoors is important as well, no? It's not important. You just go outside and play and do nothing else. That's no, all. No, but it's a physical activity. You stay fit. Hmm? Hmm? Really? Do you like any sport? Do you like cricket, badminton, any sport? 
I like sport, cricket, basketball. Basketball. Yep, and I also want to help poor people, and oh. I want to raise voice for Kashmir, and I also give many speech many to make speech? people understand what wrong they did and what right they must do to make Allah happy. That's all. Okay, so so you want to do a speech right now? Are you ready? Okay. Yeah. Do you want to stand up? Mm -hmm. Okay, stand up then. Let, let's. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to give this little angel. Uh, how, for how long do you want to speak? A minute or two minutes? One minute. One minute. Okay, your minute start now. Go ahead. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today I have a speech for Kashmir people. That Kashmir people, don't you worry. You're not alone. We are with you, and we will stand beside you. We will together. We will face everything, and we are your. Remember, we are your first child ambassador who loves you the most. Yeah. And we are living in your heart. Allah will help you there and soon, inshallah, you will be liberated from Indian army. Wow. Do you want to say something else? That's all I wanted to Thank say. you very much. That was great, Laiba. And a big round of applause for you too as well. And everybody out there appreciates you, my team, my producers, everybody's in love with you because of the fact that you've got that courage. As a, as, as a kid, I believe that it's very hard to understand the kind of problems they might be going through. And you have that under, a complete understanding of what the problem is. It's just perfect. And it amazes me to a greater extent as well. And I would definitely want to be in conversation with your mother and father who are over here in the studios, by the way. So I'm just going to ask them a question from here. So, how did she learn this? Or naturally, she adopted it? Well, she has this. Can we pan the camera on her? Just to give them a look. Okay. First of all, actually, she has this thing. Okay. Everything interests her. Okay. And then whenever she watches something, she asks, she has a curiosity. All right. All right. So, so ladies and gentlemen, you know, she, she had this curiosity to herself and she kept on asking questions. That's what her father is saying. And uh, here she is, you know, she's all ready to even fight for Kashmir. Are you ready to fight for Kashmir? I am sure do. Okay. She is. She is. But that, that's just great. So, but Savera, uh, towards the end, you know, before I wrap up this segment as well, what do you want to say to people who are out there? What do you, how do you want to help the community yourself? I, I want to say that, I want to say to Kashmiri people that we are with you and one day we'll become a country. Well, that's great. But other than that, you know, what do you want to do for all those Pakistani people we have over here already? I want to, I, I want to fight hard. Yep. And I want to be uh, the best woman I could be. Wow, that's great. I want to try my best. I think that's wonderful. And what about you, Samaya? What do you want to do when you grow up? Do you want to be a teacher? Do you want to be a doctor? What do you want to be? Doctor. You want to be a doctor as well? Well, that's great. So I'm just going to wish you best of luck. Okay, best of luck. Best of luck. Best of luck. Thank you very much for joining us. And ladies and gentlemen, without a doubt, it was one of the most uh, amazing days of my life because I got to see these amazing angels over here in the studios with the passion and with a heart which is full of love for their country and not just for their country but for humanity as well. And this is the kind of generations we need for, so that Pakistan can actually be on the right track as well. And may Pakistan prosper, ladies and gentlemen, and may all the pains and agony which uh, Kashmiris are going through may it end very soon as well. And for all those people who are out there, I'm just going to pledge you that if there's anything possible within your own capacity as an individual, please make sure to do that so that uh, their pain and agony goes away as well. With that, we're going to go towards a short break. Don't go anywhere because when we guys will come back, we're actually going to talk about World Photography Day and the wonders photographers has done for Pakistan and for the rest of the world. Let's do it. Good morning. Thank you very much.
right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for everybody who just got tuned into PTV while you watch your world this morning along with Shahzad Khan. Today, ladies and gentlemen, earlier we were in conversation with some very amazing young humanitarians from Pakistan who actually wanted to bring about a change even in Indian occupied Kashmir. And I loved every bit of it, and it's because of the fact that it was coming straight from the heart. And whatever they said was just truth. And I think that uh, everybody will actually fall prey to their cuteness as well. And I definitely wish. Uh, all of these amazing kiddos over here in the studios to do their best in their lives and make sure that you make your parents proud oh, and they're already doing it but other than that ladies and gentlemen other than world humanitarian day on 19th of august it's uh, world photography day as well and i think that photographers have actually changed the world with billions of pictures being uploaded every day with billions of ideas being shared every day i think that you know we really need to pay them a rich tribute for all of those people who take out, uh, you know, I mean, uh, who take out time, who go to different places, who go through quite a lot of hardships just to make sure that they give the right content to the right people so that they can actually build up on that, so that they can write stories around it. And it's quite a difficult job. It's not an easy job. And for all of those people who are actually photographers, I know how, how tough their lives are. And it's because of the fact that every now and then they're looking for something greater. And uh, if, if we are to talk about World Photography Day, ladies and gentlemen, I think that the entire concept of World Photography Day is to make the world aware of what's going on all over the globe in the first place and then to connect people for the betterment of other nations, for the betterment of other people as well. And other than that, on World Photography Day 2019, which is today, you know, there is an open uh, competition and the winner is actually going to get $5,000. I don't know whether people know about it or not, but we have been joined by a photojournalist over here in the studio who's actually going to let us know about the brief history. And she's actually going to share her opinion about what photographers are capable of and what they can do. But before I introduce her, I just want people to you know, have, have this in their head. And it's because of the fact that I think that photographers are definitely, I mean, I'm going to give them the due credit and it's because of the fact that all the photographers and the video makers, they did a great deal for Pakistan. What they did was that they went to the, all the northern areas. They made sure that they're going to take pictures and post them on the right platform so that a lot of people are actually going to see them, which they did. And then a larger number of people actually started coming to Pakistan. They've started visiting Pakistan and it definitely gives them quite a lot of foreign exchange as well. But other than that, you know, for them to travel all of these places to make sure that people get to know the right thing is a difficult task. How do they do justice with their job is something which I'm going to ask them today. Whether it's difficult or not is another question. But on my right hand side, ladies and gentlemen, we have been joined by a photography journalist as well. She's none other than Miss Saina Bashir. Hello, Assalamu Alaikum. How are you? Welcome back. Um, thank you so much for having me on this. Thank show. you very much for joining. It's wonderful to have you. So. Yeah, in the first place, what do you have to sp say about the day? Do you think that it is an important day to be observed? Of course. I think so. I think photography should be celebrated okay. every single day. Yeah. Because every single day, photographers around the world and, uh, you know, people who are not photographers as well these days, anybody who has a smartphone can take pictures. Yeah. Anybody can be a photographer. And it is important to celebrate because, um, you know, photographers help uh, the, it's it's a way of recording history yeah. um, to capture a moment in time, and um, and and the picture and and photos don't become obsolete. Yeah. They have a life of you know an evergreen life yeah. where um, for billions of years um, ahead of us people will still you know look at these photographs and it'll tell them what what their previous like world yeah. was like exactly. um, and then also to uh, in order to express it's a way of expressing yourself it's a form of art right exactly. so it's it's really amazing how you can um, share your experience what yep. you're seeing as a yep. photographer with the rest of the world um, because if two people are taking the same picture they're going to take it very differently because yeah. it's what you you see as a as a photographer or as a, as a person so i think yes absolutely it should be celebrated um, every single day and uh, you know these days especially with these smartphones Everybody has a responsibility of, you know, recording history, yep. take, you know, expressing themselves in the form of photos. And especially with social media, like you said, there's a competition today. Exactly. Um, Who's going to get you, more likes? Yeah, if you, if you <laughs> use the hashtag World Photography Day, yeah. 
um, you know, they just want to see what all, like, all the pictures from around the world, and it's such an amazing way to connect, and it's an amazing way to learn about other cultures. Exactly. Um, to learn about other places that you haven't been, but maybe you would want to now travel yeah. to. Um, it's been amazing how, um, how, fo how photography has had a very strong impact in news and breaking, photog breaking news yep. and um, documentary photography. Uh, if you want to learn about any issue from, you know, decades ago, you can go and search for those pictures and they'll give you a really good idea. More of than what happened. Of what happened. Yeah. More than words, actually. Exactly. Um, and it's, it's great. And, you know, thank you very much for mentioning that as well. Because as a matter of fact, whenever there's a breaking news, ladies and gentlemen, you know, we really do, do not receive a video in the first place. You know, it's just a picture of that incident. And, you know, for all of those people who are out there, Imagine that they're even risking their lives, but we'll come back to this, but we have a smaller segment Just a small very small segment. I mean, it's just going to take a minute or two What we do is that we take out a picture every day and we want the person to let us know what they think about that picture Okay, so okay. you as a photographer and a photojournalist. <laughs> we want you to let us know about this picture. Go ahead. Can we have it, please? <laughs> 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 That's yeah, incredible. So what do you have to say about it? <laughs> That's incredible. Yes. So, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think what I would love to say about this picture is that this is what they go through every single day. <laughs> I mean, it's not just uh, one day in a life. It, it's, it's, it's an everyday story. But what it's about you? Struggle. What do you have to say? Um, no, definitely. It is a struggle every single day. Yeah. Uh, the assignments change. The stories change. Um, a, la a week ago, I was in Muzaffarabad. We went to the line of control. Um, so that was a very different kind of a story from the week before that when I was in Larkana um, doing a story about um, HIV and how uh, ch children under the age of five. How bad is have, it? I mean, it's, I'm, it's, I, is it bad? it's pretty bad because you see, the, the, in a town of uh, 30,000 people called Ratodero, which is 27 kilometers from Larkana, yeah. has about 1,000 people who have been diagnosed, and 80% of them are under the age of 15. And the youngest that I photographed was a year old. I mean, this is. This That's is, devastating. It is. It's. It's. It was heartbreaking, and it is a. I think it's even a bigger issue than just this one town. Exactly. Um, I think it's a. It's a more larger issue, and we need to address it. And, um, and which is why you know what I want to ask you is that you know photographers are actually exposed to quite a lot of violence, quite a lot of such stories. I mean, which you just shared as well. So don't you have like, I know that for sure there might be an impact on your head too as well. I mean talking about or listening to all of these stories and being exposed to all of this. How do you guys resolve within your own selves then? Because it is very important. Yeah, no, it's, it's really important to have a good support system, uh, to have good friends, good partners um, that you can share your day with yeah. and tell them, you know, what you experienced. And sometimes when I do that, it really helps because, you know, I, I, I'm able to share it with somebody. So, you know, it's, it's a way of letting it out. Yeah. Um, but then, you know, what keeps you going and what drives you really is uh, the fact that this is an important story. And yeah. if you don't do it, it's not going to come out and the world will not be able to see exactly. it. And people who need to do something about it, they wouldn't get a chance to, you know, um, no. so, do something. So as a photojournalist, you know, I'm sorry that I'm asking you this question, but it just popped up. So, you know, when you're exposed to so many things, you know, at, at times when you sleep at night, you know, can, can you, do, do you get those images back in your, I, I do not want to yeah. call them nightmares, but I mean, okay, if, if it was something beautiful, a yeah. dream, yeah. do you see all of this as well? Because everybody's got a photographic memory. Right. So how do you overcome all of those things? Yeah, I mean, it's difficult. I, I, I know it, it's tough. I mean, it depends on the, you know, the story. The first night I feel like is always tough. Um, after I'm done shooting and I come back and I'm alone, when that's when you really process it. Yeah. A lot of times when you're photographing, you're, you're just doing your work. So, it, you know, the impact comes later yeah. when you're done with it. And then you think about what you just photographed. Um, but, yeah, it is absolutely, it's not easy to see somebody's pain so closely. And then you sometimes, you know, you want to sympathize with them also uh, rather than just take their photographs. So yeah. I try to like spend time with them first before I take out my camera. Yeah. So I sit down with them, I uh, 
you know, condole with them and uh, try to like build a relationship so that it's not just that I'm just there to photograph them, but it it is a human, you know, connection yeah. that you also have to make. And uh, thank yeah. you very much for saying that. And ladies and gentlemen, so such kind of respect is very important uh, wherever you may probably be, and which is why. I w I'm actually forced to think, and I used to think about this every single time I used to watch uh, National Geographic, because what I could see was that you know there, you know, are lions actually out on a hunt, and you know there are photographers sitting, they're taking pictures, but nobody's stopping anything. So this is one thing I used to think as a kid, but now you know wh while we are in conversation with you, and I've got a chance, so I'm going to ask you this question: When you see such atrocities happening, I mean, obviously not about Nat Geo, but you're at a situation where there's war going on, where there are killings, where there are problems. So you as a photographer, don't you at times feel like stopping all of that? And you are over there within that particular situation. How do you guys operate with all of that? Well, it depends that it depends whether you can really do something to stop it or not, okay. right? That's one thing. I mean, yep. if you what we've taught is that, you know, if somebody is in trouble, you help them first. If okay. they need to go to a hospital, even if you take in the photographs, the next thing you need to do is take them to a hospital. Okay. You can't just leave them there. Yeah. Um, there have been photographers that had th their Pulitzers have been taken away from them because they didn't follow these these yes, kind of ethics. Okay. Um, so that's really important. And then, you know, if you, if you can't really resolve the issue, what you can do is document it yeah. uh, to the best of your ability so that the world can see it. And, and, and that happened in Vietnam War also. Exactly. Um, you know, they, the, the U.S. backed out and uh, uh, there was, you know, put an end to the war because of all the uh, images that were coming out of uh, Vietnam that the American public was not aware of those okay. war atrocities. So it's really important to and it's great. And how document. many times do you actually feel like writing a caption underneath the picture as well? Because, you know, you take a picture, you know that, you know, it's going to tell the story or, you know, it's going to do the job. And then half of the time you might think that, you know, okay, I can write this probably. But photojournalism, I don't think that you can actually write something. Or no, can no, you? we can. Okay. So we have to uh, write a caption for every single picture that we file. Okay. Um, and, and it's the same five W's of journalism, what, where, when, oh how, and... Um, and so we have to like put the date, the location, explain exactly what's happening. Okay. Um, if the person posed for the portrait, you have to write that this is a posed portrait and yep. not a natural phot photograph. So it's very detailed. You have to add captions. So everybody needs to know what this is before yeah. you print the picture. And it holds the photographer responsible as well um, because they, you know, they need to be very careful that they can't uh, misreport something, yeah. you know. Yeah, um, which is why you know, that was my next question. So, you know, while being on television, you know, you come across so many people, you know, whether they are on television or not. But for especially for people who are on television, we have seen, even with the private channels, I'm not accusing anybody and I'm not saying that, you know, it's the Pakistani channels or any other channel. But what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to imply over here is that I've seen a lot of people change the agenda totally and maneuver it around. And I've seen a lot of journalists do that for the best uh, interest of themselves or probably in the best interest of the country or however it may be operating. But since I am a guy from the entertainment industry, so I am really not into that business. But this is something which I want to ask. Have you ever uh, done that? No. No. When, no. Have you seen people doing that? Absolutely. And I don't think they're journalists. Okay. So what do you say to them when, when you see that you know people are actually twisting stories? I mean, that's that's just... Uh, morally and ethically wrong. It's yep. like lying. It's yeah. like cheating, right? Yep. Um, or, or, or stealing even. So, so a journalist is not supposed to do that. You have to remain objective. You have to follow a certain kind of ethics. Yep. You know, working in Pakistan, um, when I work on stories uh, such as, you know, in the red, red light district or on transgender um, or various other stories, a lot of times I've been asked to pay them. Okay. Um, and the fixers that I work with, they, you know, they always tell me, you, we can just give them a little bit of money and we can still get our story. And I, and I refuse every time. And they said, nobody is going to find out because it's just you and me over here. Yeah. So, so even if you do pay, I'm not going to tell anyone. And I said, no, it, I, I just cannot do it because exactly. I'm going to lose my job. That'll be the end of my career. Yeah. Because that's how I've been trained in the U.S. Yeah. Um, over there, you f have to follow a very strict code of ethic, uh, which I think 
is not the case in Pakistan. I think you can get away with a lot over here. Right. Um, I think that's also because we don't have uh, good journal journalism institutes. Exactly. So a lot of the journalists who call themselves journalists do not even have the formal training yeah. um, to, to be in their exactly. profession. And, and this is how it is in Pakistan, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I think that we, we are actually on the road towards uh, fixing all of these things. And inshallah, you know, because we have got people like Sina over here, you know, graduated from abroad as well, have learned journalism and they are here to share their experiences. It's great. But what are you, how do you think that, for example, for all of those people who've actually hired you for, for the kind of services you provide, and then they have their own particular agenda, which you think and which you know that is not the right agenda, are you going to go for that job? Or are you actually going to refuse? What are you going to do? So um, I, I, I work for foreign uh, media outlets yep. and uh, I don't particularly feel like they do have an agenda. Okay. Um, most of the wire agencies, they just need the photos uh, okay. and you know, that's it. Um, or uh, for like publications like the New York Times or the Daily Telegraph, um, I am just taking pictures to support the article a lot okay. of times. So I don't have anything to do with you know, the agenda or whatever, yep. but I don't feel like there is one okay. because they do like all sorts of stories. And uh, um, I haven't come across a story so far that I just thought was, you know, unethical to do. Um, if I do come across, then I might, you know, turn the turn down the assignment. All right, but well, it well that's happened. great. And thank you very much for being so honest. And towards the end, I just want you to say a few words to all of those people who you think are not doing the right job. So whatever you think, is right. Go ahead, say it to them. Camera is all yours. Um, it's they have they have such a huge responsibility um, because they're on TV. They are uh, addressing millions of people in the world, and they need to be very careful about what they say and how they say it because there is somebody out there who can take that message very negatively, exactly. and they, that it could really harm uh, people as well. Um, and sort of spark like something that shouldn't, you know, uh, be, be, out take, be out there. Um, so they have a real, they have a really big responsibility on their shoulder to make sure that what they're saying is authentic um, and not, you know, they can't fabricate uh, exactly. news. Exactly. Thank you very much for saying that, thank and thank you very much for joining us. It was wonderful you. to have you. So for everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, I believe that it is everybody's responsibility to make sure that the kind of work they're doing or the kind of jobs they're involved with, that they're given their 100% and they move in the right direction and they do not have any negativity to think about. So please make sure, I, it's a pledge to all of those Pakistanis out there, we have started to bother about a lot of other things, we are taking anxiety and depression seriously, which I believe is, a, is the right thing to do. And I think that for all of those people who are out there raising their voice about all of these different concerns which we have, it's a wonderful thing to do and uh, believe me that you know uh, tonight when I'm actually be going to be on my bed before sleeping I'm going to think about my show today because these uh, young humanitarians made my day in the first place and if these brave and young hearts can actually think of so much greater things to do in life I think that uh, it's going to be a lesson for everybody who's so old just like me to do something wonderful for their country and it's never too late. Thank you very much, Saina, for being with us. And for everybody who's out there, please make sure to write to us on our Facebook page, which is with the name of World This Morning. On Twitter, it's World This Morning without a G. On Daily Motion YouTube, it's World This Morning. The Instagram page is World underscore This Morning. The repeat's going to be at 5 past 11 p.m. tonight. Till the next time, one, two, three, good morning. Have a